we graph this conic section? Let's do it, Mr. All right. All right. I'm so, excited. I'm it's glad either going to be. Too. That's always like, you must mean you're excited. <laughs> Could this be a parabola? Well, I, I, it seems unlikely. I mean, you have, right, x yeah. and y squared. I have right. a squared x and a squared y. Can't be a parabola. Could it be an ellipse? Uh, no, because with an ellipse, if you recall, the square terms have to have the same sign. They have to either both be positive or both be negative. So it can't be a circle either. It's got to be a hyperbola. And if we recall, a hyperbola can be written in lots of different ways. But one way that makes it easy to graph is to think of a hyperbola in this form where hk is kind of the center of the hyperbola. And the a and the b tell us about the slant asymptotes. OK? So we've explored all this and discovered this in class, so this is just going to be a how to do this. Are we ready? All right, yeah. OK, if I want to change this to look like this, I'm going to do the process called completing the square. If you recall, that process works best if you have a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to first factor out a 4 from my x terms. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from my y terms. And I'm just going to move that pesky 5 onto the other side, because it's not an x term or a y term. OK. My mission is to change this so I could then factor it so it would look like something like that. So if you recall completing the square, we take half of the coefficient by the x, right, the b. Half of that middle term is 3. We square it to get 9. And if you think about it, that works nicely. That would then factor as x plus 3 times itself. But I can't just add something to one side without balancing it. So even though it looks like I added 9, I really added 36. So to keep this equation balanced, I have to add 36 to the other side. Of course, I could subtract 36 from this side, but I'm just going to do it this way. OK? So far, so good? Let's look at the y's. I want to complete that square. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. I'm going to square that. That gives me a beautiful, perfect square trinomial, which I can factor as y minus 5 quantity squared. Let's think. I didn't really add 25. I actually added a negative 25, subtracted 25. So to keep this equation balanced, I'm going to subtract 25 from that side. And here we go. Let's see, 5 minus 25 is negative 20 plus 30. Did I do my arithmetic yeah, right? Yeah, looks good. OK. I'm almost to this shape. But I want that to be 1, so I'm going to turn that into a 1 by dividing everything by 16. And lo and behold, if I divide everything by 16, I have my hyperbola in a shape that I can graph it nicely. Everybody see how I did that? 4 divided by 16 is 1 over 4. Boom, boom. Okay, here we go. Can we walk this way? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm now going to graph this hyperbola just loosely. I know the center of the hyperbola is at negative 3, 5. And, you know, there are various ways to do this. You can just plug in points to remind yourself is if the hyperbola is opening side to side or up to down, I think we can quickly discover by plugging in points that since that x is positive, it's going to be opening like so. So I'm going to take my a, which is the square root of 4, 2. I'm going to go 2 to the right and 2 to the left. And I'm going to go up. 4 and down 4 from my little center. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
one, two, three, four. And you know how I was taught to do these in high school? And I still like it. I make a little rectangle. And those diagonals, if I connect those diagonals, that shows me the end behavior of this hyperbola. Because really what I'm doing, if you think about the slope of those slant asymptotes, it's going to be plus or minus b over a. Isn't that cool? So, I my, can't believe that you remember how you used to do this in high school. I know. Isn't that crazy? What a, what a nerd you were. I am a I'm total nerd. Yeah. I loved graphing these things. They're like butterflies. Wow. Who wouldn't? You know, I know. Sure. So I'm getting infinitely close to those slant asymptotes. The slant asymptotes, of course, have a slope of plus or minus b over a. And you can think about why that is so. It's kind of interesting. All right. We just grabbed that conic section. Thanks for your help, Mr. Haas.